Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Credit Management 101 by Patrick Coughlin of Creditor Watch. You're listening in using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the phone, select telephone in the audio pane and the dial in information will be displayed. To give you a brief introduction on today's presenter, Patrick is the Commercial Director at Creditor Watch and was one of the two founding employees. He is responsible for sales, marketing and overall company strategy, including product development. I'll now hand over to Patrick. Thanks very much, Kate. Uh, welcome everyone. Well, I might do, I've just seen a couple more people coming, so I'll just give it another sort of 10, 15 seconds or so, so people don't join and feel like they've missed anything. Um, and then we'll kick off straight away, because I know that people are probably rushing to the lunchroom to listen in. Okay, let's get into it then. So welcome everyone. Um, thank you for the introduction, Kate. So today's webinar is obviously a Credit Watch Apple webinar and we're looking at what we've titled the webinar as Credit Management 101. So there's obviously a, a wide variety of probably experience that are listening in to this particular webinar, those who are you know, very experienced in, in credit management and those who are potentially fairly new to it as well. So I've kept it fairly broad um, and I think importantly I've provided a number of links to certain documentation that you'll be able to access um, at a later date. You know, print out white papers or um, infographics for instance, keep them on your, on your desk, that sort of thing. So the key sort of message today is, you know, keeping it fairly simple um, and, and putting some processes hopefully into place that you can use ongoing. So just a little bit about me, um, as Kate said, I'm the commercial director. I've been at Credit Watch since day one, so feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn if you want, um, and um, I can always get back to you with any questions that you might have. We do have a Q&A box that exists in that GoToWebinar control panel. Um, I'll encourage you to ask questions along the way. Uh, um, I won't answer them as we go, but I'll have a look, um, depending on how we're going with time, and also how complex or simple the questions are. Hopefully I can answer a few of them today during the webinar itself um, at the end. Uh, if not, we will definitely get back to you um, with the answers to those throughout the day, um, if not you know, within sort of 24 hours maximum. We're also recording um, the webinar, so we'll provide a recording of it as well as the slides that we're looking up now. That way you can always come back to it if for some reason you have to duck out early um, or if you, uh, you know, want to recap on anything that I touch on, you'll obviously be able to access it later on as well. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to run a quick poll just asking, do you have a documented credit management process in place? So really that's asking, um, Yes, I've got something written down that I refer to and being honest, you know, that you refer to it and you, and you keep it. No, being I've got nothing but it's, you know, kind of all in my head and then the arms sort of, you know, I might have something written down but I don't refer to it, I don't follow it enough um, or you might be in the process. So just sort of take some liberty there and, and, and be honest with the answers and, and I'll uh, come back to you with some results in just a second, most people have already voted, which is nice. It's always good to get an understanding of, you know, who's listening in, what sort of process they have in place. Um, it's good to get you thinking about your processes as well. So as, we, as I'm going through this webinar, you can sort of think, oh, okay, that's good, I could add that, or, you know, I should have something that's written down that, that I can refer to or that my staff can refer to going forward as well. All right, I'll close this up share some results. So look, 56% of you say yes, you do have a documented process in place, which is fantastic. Um, small amount, only 11% said no, and 33% sort of, which means we can probably find hopefully a bit of improvement um, after today's or during today's webinar itself. So thank you for that. I've got another poll coming up a little bit later as well. So a bit of, a bit of the uh, agenda for today, I'll, I'll just touch on who Creditor Watch are briefly. Um, we've been 
involved as a premium um, supplier with APA for some time now. Um, we've attended a number of the events um, and we actually put on a round table a couple of weeks ago. So hopefully most of you have heard about us by now. If not, that about should take care of that. We also run a quarterly small business risk review, which looks at data from you know, our various data sources, puts it together and, and gives you a sort of overall understanding of what we're seeing in the market um, from both our customers and also from public databases where we're pulling information from. I've got another poll for you as well. Um, and then we'll get into, I guess, the Credit Management 101. Um, we, we've got a, a little infographic that we use quite a bit, which we call the six Re's or six Re's of credit management. Um, so we'll, we'll run through that. And that really should be the way that as a, as a, as a most basic sort of, uh, I guess, process that you should have in place and make sure that you are doing everything correctly from um, the moment you onboard a new customer or the moment that a new customer at least applies for an account with you all the way through the, uh, the customer journey. And um, you know, if it does start to go a little bit pear-shaped or they slow their payments down, how do we react to that? How do we recover you know, outstanding debts, so to speak? I'll then give you a quick Creditor Watch demonstration as well, so you can understand how to put those six Re's of credit management into actual practice using Creditor Watch. That'll just be a fairly um, easy demo, so you can get a feel for you know, what, what it is that you can access as part of your Creditor Watch subscription. A um, bit of a summary on all of it and then finish up with some Q&A if we do have some time um, and the questions that are asked are, are sort of easy to, to respond to. Uh, those more complex ones obviously might re require a phone call direct or uh, you know, a little bit of a longer email to you at the end. So a little bit about Creditor Watch. We're Australia's leading commercial credit reporting bureau and we've got over 50,000 customers now. We have a wide variety of products. Um, and today we'll obviously be looking at number one here, which is the credit reports, monitoring alerts and debt collection tools. That's really the core product that we offered. That's what we started off with uh, six years ago. We've got a few other things as well for, for bigger organisations out there who um, might want to get involved and, and have a, an online credit application that assists with onboarding um, customers via a website rather than you know, using a paper-based application form. Um, and that includes some automated credit decisioning. So it makes consistent decisions for you all the time. Um, and then also some data washing and data fulfillment. For small businesses, so any small, smaller businesses out there, um, we really act as a virtual accounts receivable manager. Um, and if you do have Xero or MYOB, a, a cloud-based MYOB product, uh, you can actually integrate that with your Creditor Watch account as well that, that further enhances the offering um, so that, for instance, when you do add a new contact to, to Xero, for instance, we'll actually push a credit report straight to you. So if you've forgotten to run a credit report on them, we'll send one to you via email. And the beauty of Credit Watch is obviously affordable for everyone. So we've got small traders operating out of their you know, second bedroom all the way through to public companies um, who are taking advantage of our various uh, offerings and, and uh, services out there. So where do we get our data from? Um, we've got a variety of sources that we plug into. Um, ASIC, obviously the company register. Australian Business Register, which you might know as ABN Lookup. We access court um, actions, so summons, writs, and default judgments from around Australia. Insolvency notices, um, which is administered by ASIC. So that has anything to do with winding up an administration, so towards the, uh, the, the back end of a a customer relationship that's hopefully, oh, unfortunately, probably gone sour by that stage. Uh, we get information from debt collectors as well. When they're collecting a debt against the debtor, they have the ability to leave a footprint. Um, of course, our 50,000 customers, and then zero and MYOB. And something that our managing director has been working on with the ATO is getting access to their default, their tax default data. So people who are you know, well overdue in paying their tax, um, haven't made contact with the, the ATO, have ignored, you know, demand payments from them. Um, in the future, the ATO will have the ability to register defaults or tax defaults against uh, those companies as well. So we will have access to that data, hopefully by the end of 2017. So something I want you to think about as we go through this webinar today is what I call a bad debts journey. So how does a debt go from um, you know, a happy customer approaching you for 
goods or services um, through to you know an overdue overdue invoice um, or potentially even further than that obviously administration so typically you know you have your outstanding invoice it's then overdue if you're a credit watch customer or you're using another credit bureau you know register a payment default uh, it's a really powerful tool and I'll go into that in the in the presentation and the demonstration if it's big enough you're probably taking them to court to get a default um, a, a, a court judgment against them and then from there looking at the ability to either wind them up or put them into administration so keep that in mind as we go through this you want to be having processes in place to deal with everything from that first approach where they want um, a credit account with you all the way through to actually either registering a default or, or, or taking it further, taking them to court, winding them up, etc. Let's have a look at the uh, small business risk review, which is something we run on a quarterly basis. So this is the Q2 results for 2017. So as I said, we'll give you access to this slide so you can actually come through and have a look at the review itself. So it's a nice infographic there. And we're providing data and some, you know, we're trying to identify as much sort of publicly available data that's available out there that can be flagging, you know, potential credit risk, whether it be, um, you know, court actions within your particular state. So we can see New South Wales and Queensland have both had increases um, in both the, the number of court actions, but also the value there. Uh, South Australia, we've seen a difference between the court actions and the dollar amount. So smaller cases have increased um, in Q2 2017 versus the previous year's quarter. Victoria and WA have both had increases as well. Um, in terms of payment trends, we've, we conducted a survey recently of, of Creditor Watch customers and we found that um, quite clearly, and, and which I think is a really positive thing that people are doing the right thing, that they feel more comfortable trading with a company from a risk perspective rather than a sole trader, trust or partnership. Now we call sole traders, trusts or partnership unincorporated entities because they don't have obviously, you know, directors, um, shareholders that are obviously identifiable. Dealing with a company is definitely the preferred method or the preferred entity type that you, you should be and um, should, you should be trading with, so to speak. Um, you can obviously see a lot more information about them. There's more data out there. Uh, the credit reports available on them is uh, a, a lot more enhanced as well. Um, even just the public information that you can get from ASIC to see addresses, shareholders and uh, directors is, is really important versus not being able to see that of sole traders, partnerships or trusts. In terms of the average payment default, we've actually seen a reduction for the first time, uh, Q217 versus Q216. Um, so this is really interesting and what, what we typically find is this jump here which was in late uh, you know Q, Q3, Q4 last year, um, it, it actually acted as an indicator um, to the increase in court actions that we're seeing now. So, so hopefully we're through the process or a period of you know a bit of instability. We are seeing you know obviously the increases in court actions which is something that you want to be aware of and, and hopefully by monitoring your customers for instance you find out if they do have any court actions against them um, but we might see it start to sort of taper out for the rest of the year 2017 hopefully similarly we're seeing a, uh, a big reduction in the number of unincorporated entities that have failed in that last quarter i've just gone So key points there I've obviously pulled out for you so that when you do uh, access these slides at a later date, you'll be able to sort of pull out the important bits of information. So it brings me to our second poll, which is, have you noticed a change recently in the way customers pay their bills? So what I've got here, I've given you four options. I've said they're either paying slower, they're paying faster, which is great staying the same or you haven't really noticed a change. So it'd be great to sort of get an understanding of, you know, how are your customers paying you at the time, at, at the moment, or even, you know, in the last, say, couple of months? Um, are you feeling the pinch a bit? Are they slowing down or, or you find that potentially things are improving? Um, and then we can sort of work out 
maybe we can have a think about why that's happening as a technology, you put process in place, that sort of thing. So, so have a think about um, the results that have occurred in particular to you and, and potentially why they have occurred. I'll give it another 10 seconds or so and then I'll close that off. So sharing some results. So fantastic to see. Um, paying slower, zero percent. That's that's great. That's either let's put that down to um, your processes that you have in place, your experience, your ability to collect debts, which is great. Hopefully you're doing due diligence. Um, but also, you know, I think um, there's a there's a lot less uncertainty out there at the moment, despite those stats that we looked at around an increase in you know payment defaults and court actions. I think the key is. Obviously, doing if you're doing business with the right customers, um, you know, low credit risk customers, that's really important, and you're not going to see slower payments. Um, paying faster, 22, staying the same, 22, and I haven't noticed a change. I'm a big portion of you, but generally, if you haven't noticed a change, um, it probably means that they are not necessarily paying you slower. That's something that you would definitely notice in your cash flow. So let's go through the six REs of credit management. So the first one we've got is research the credit history of all customers. Now, you should always start by researching into that new customer that's just approached you for a credit account. Um, a credit report's obviously gonna highlight any adverse information to help you make informed decisions and safeguarding your cash flow and minimizing bad debt. So you really wanna make sure you know exactly who you're dealing with, who they are, are they good, are they bad, are they indifferent? Second one, remind them for prompt payment. So following up with timely reminders will obviously encourage prompt payment. So what you really should have, even if it is, it is basic, is um, processes that are written down. For example, I'm gonna send a statement um, seven days after the debt was due, I'm gonna follow this up with a phone call at 10 days, um, I'm going to send a letter of demand at 30 days, et cetera, et cetera. So having it, having it written down ensures that you keep those processes in place. And there's a lot of technology out there that you can actually use to assist with that, particularly if you're using, for instance, an MYOB or a Xero where they have those invoice reminders or you know, payment reminders that you can set up. That just means that you know that um, each customer is being treated um, to a reminder reminder sort of service. So even if you are very busy with sales or production or operations, something like that, there is someone or something out there, in this case, your accounting software that is sending out reminders to your customers um, because it really is true by listening to the squeaky wheel gets the grease. It holds true when it comes to, to um, overdue payments. If someone is chasing, if another supplier is chasing one of your customers for payment, um, you know, more aggressively than you, or you're not even, you know, you're not sending any reminders or anything like that until it gets to 30, 60 days overdue, the chance of you getting paid um, sooner is very, very slim. So the next one is review their activity regularly. So this is about looking at various things such as um, the cash flow position, um, having a look at their credit history, so doing a review on their credit report if things do start to slow or their payment terms start to push out a little bit. Um, you can set up alerts, for instance, with Creditor Watch. Um, you can monitor all your customers for important changes. So if any, any change does occur to a customer, like new director, a payment default, court action, uh, debt collectors chasing them for overdue debts for another supplier, for instance, uh, we'll actually send you an email alert. So which leads you on to being able to react to those important changes. So it's really important to find out when people are slowing payments elsewhere, for instance, uh, because it's a very important indicator that that could be happening to you soon as well. So react. When, they, when, you, de when you do see certain things change, be it them slowing, uh, slowing down payment or, or your sales rep out on the road going, oh, you know, the, the they weren't open or they seemed to have moved or there was no one in there, um, you know, their machines weren't operating, that sort of thing, you know, getting as much sort of um, outside information as possible to allow you to go, hold on, something's not quite right to, to how they have been in the past. 
Um, the next one we have here is recover debt. So be sure to let slow and non-payers know that you take debt seriously. Um, displaying things like the Credit Watch membership logo on your invoices and statements, um, or you know, sending out regular letters of demand will increase the chance of getting paid on time, or at least recovering a bad debt, for instance. The last one we have here is register. So when all steps have been taken to retrieve payment, it's time to register a default. So a default is ultimately a black mark that is added to a debtor's credit file for others to view. Um, it will affect their credit rating and it will also alert other companies that are trading with them that they are a slow or non-payer. So it's a really powerful tool to get paid. Even simply saying that we are going to register a default you know, by close of business Friday if we haven't received payment, um, you know, the majority of the time you will get a reaction or you will get contacted by that particular debtor. They'll get in touch, they'll say, look, I can't, I either can't afford it at the moment, so can I go into a payment plan? And you can go, cool, let's get you paying that off over, you know, six or 12 months, for instance, which is better than, than nothing. Or if they've just that typical sort of um, customer that knows that they can stretch you out as long as possible without any, you know, real blowback. Um, they'll definitely get in contact and go, hey, okay, cool, let, let me finalize this, let me, let me get payment made as soon as possible. I definitely don't want a, a black mark on my credit file going forward. So really powerful tool that, registering a default. Um, also registering, the, sorry, other tools that, that fall under register is obviously then going, cool, I want to take this to a, a debt collector or a lawyer um, or I want to you know, get a court action or essentially wind them up after that process as well. So it's a bit of a catch-all term there to consider. Um, I have put a link in there to download the infographic itself. So I'll just click through and, and give you a quick one. So you can see a nice, colorful, interactive sort of tool there for you to jump into and look at at a later date. So what we'll do, I'll um, jump into Credit Watch now and give you a demonstration and show you how to put those sort of six REs of credit management into practice so that you can get a better understanding of exactly what it looks like um, you know, and how it would work for your business. Okay, so this is the Creditor Watch dashboard. Now this is really your home page as a Creditor Watch customer to enable you to perform you know, a myriad of, uh, of um, functions and features. I guess the three things we're going to look at today is obviously credit reporting, how to run one and, and what to look for. I'm going to look at um, monitoring and alerts. So when you join as a Credit Watch customer, we'll get you set up, get all your customers loaded into your watch list. And if any important changes occur, we'll actually send you email alerts when they do occur. And then the last one is um, taking advantage of the debt collection tools. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to search for a business. We have um, live search set up, so it makes it really intuitive and easy to find um, companies that you're looking for. So in this case, Bloomer Constructions. Now I've used them in demonstrations before because, as you can see, they're not in um, they're not in great shape at the moment. This is what we call widgets at the top here. So we're giving you a whole bunch of important information straight away to see that okay, these guys have just come to me for a credit account. They want to put in an order for fifty thousand um, dollars. So the first thing I'm going to do is go. No worries. I've got your, you know, your your name. Um, hopefully, I've got the ABN, so I can be extremely accurate with finding the credit report. Come in here, have a look, and bang! You can see that this is probably a company that you don't want to do business with. Um, if you are going to do business with them, you probably want to be getting money up front for all of it. So you can see here straight away, we've got a terrible credit score. Um, a lot of people have been looking them up. They're under external administration, eight defaults, two court actions, six insolvency notices. Um, so they're really, really in bad shape. So straight away, you know, this is not a company that I want to deal with. Scrolling through for a little bit more information. So obviously pulling the ABR and ASIC data through to see exactly what type of um, entity they are, when they were registered, and obviously the statuses of both the company and also the business itself and the GST status is shown there. Credit score, well, no surprises there. They're in administration. Um, we can see that we've got a risk level of critical and they're a one out of 850. So 850 is the best, zero is the worst. Generally, a company in administration will have a score of one. 
you can see that they deteriorated fairly quickly. However, if you were monitoring this particular company, um, you know, you would have seen in Jan, Feb, a few alerts come through. So things like court action, uh, court actions and payment defaults, letting you know that, you know, these guys are struggling at the moment um, and they're starting to owe people money and those people are taking them to court, registering defaults, etc. So hopefully if you did, if they did owe you money at this point, you were closing their account, focusing on collecting the debt before they ultimately went into administration. So a few things to look at. So court actions, you can see exactly when it was lodged, who it was lodged by, and how much. So a couple of big, oh, big one here in $46,000. Uh, payment defaults. So these payment defaults are registered by Creditor Watch customers. Um, you can see a wide variety of companies um, have registered defaults against them for some big numbers as well. Insolvency notices. So you can see here, it's giving you the contact details of the administrator and also in the early days back in April, the uh, contact detail of the petitioning creditors legal team. So this is really important to see exactly who the uh, administrator is, for instance, um, the details, when the meeting's taking place, for the first um, meeting of creditors, the agenda, proof of debt and proxies, that sort of thing, and even teleconference facilities, which is really important. So if they did owe you money, at least you uh, can get on the front foot and obviously register your um, your debt with the administrators. No mercantile inquiries against this company, but if there were, that would have the date and also the debt collector that is chasing that particular company for, for money. You can see a couple of status changes. So they were registered right up until the 26th um, of April when they went into an external administration. Now, if we were still looking at this company because we thought they were in good shape, we want to deal. We want to deal with them. We want to do business with them. We can see who their directors are. So a few little things here. We can see who the director is, date of birth, their address. You can even have a look. You know, are they in a big um, waterside mansion or are they, you know, out in the burbs in a in a little apartment? So do a little bit of peeking. We can also see if they're involved in other companies. So we can see that. In this case, uh, the director is involved in a number of other companies and a number of those companies, these ones in red, are either in external administration or they've actually got other bits of adverse against them. So I can open that in a new tab and have a look and go, okay, so he's also got a court action against this particular company. The last bit to probably consider is obviously registered addresses. So that's always good to cons confirm, you know, their principal place of business or the registered office. Uh, shareholding details will tell you who the, the shareholders are. Um, and then the rest is just giving you some, you know, information about the various ASIC documents that have been lodged on the company over time and other business names that are available. Now, if I got to the end of this and thought, yep, these guys are in good shape, forget about all the negative uh, data that's registered against them. I'm going to offer them a credit account. What I should be doing is clicking monitor for changes up here. What that does is adds them to a monitoring list. So going forward, whenever any changes occur, like anything I just displayed in that credit report, um, you'll actually receive an email alert when that change occurs. So this is exactly what it looks like. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see we call it a risk alert comes through um, at about 12 o'clock each day. Uh, that's Eastern Standard Time. And it gives you a summary of all the changes that have occurred. So we can see that there's a couple of insolvency notices that have been lodged. You can see a payment default has been lodged as well as a court default judgment. And it's as simple as going, all right, I need to click on this and find out what is going on with this particular company. Because they've, we've just shipped out a, a big um, truckload of goods and apparently they've got some court actions and payment defaults. So this is where we'd be able to do a little bit more research and go, okay, well, I've got a couple of debts here. One's still outstanding, one's been part paid, but they've also got a court action as well. Not huge amounts. We might feel comfortable uh, keeping that account open, but at least you're aware of it because you can guarantee that the customer's probably not gonna contact you and let you know that, you know, they've just had a court action or a payment default against them. So those, um, those payment defaults, sorry, those, those risk alerts that you get that come through are really important to manage your day-to-day your -day, um, 
credit exposure, credit risk. Because we are plugging into so many different sources, it's simply impossible to keep track of all those on your own, um, be it whether you've got five customers you know, or 5,000 customers. <coughs> Something else we're also going to show you is what's called a high risk list. So this is actually going to tell you um, all the companies that you're dealing with that already have negative information against them. So when you first start using Creditor Watch and you load your customers into your Creditor Watch account, you'll actually be able to see historically all the negative changes that have occurred against any of your customers that you're dealing with at the moment. Now the third thing to look at is what we call debt collection tool. Now we provide a, a whole suite of debt collection tools for you to use. And this is giving you things such as the Credit Watch membership logo that you can attach to your you know, invoices, statements, final notices, email signatures, basically anywhere we've got customers who use them you know, on their website as well. So it's a nice, um, it's a nice sort of third party endorsement to have on your payment requests that get sent to your customers saying, hey, we're a member of Credit Watch. What usually happens is a customer you know, would have a look or they're already aware of Creditor Watch. So hopefully that gets your invoice pushed to the top of the pile and you get paid uh, on time or at least before other suppliers, for instance. We've got a couple of templates, so a reminder notice. So this is a, you know, a gentle sort of template that says, hey, your debt's now overdue. Um, you may have you know, overlooked it. Please note that you know, we require payment as soon as possible. Um, here are our payment details, you know, EFT, that sort of thing. The final notice template is a more, um, a more firm letter, um, basically saying if payment isn't received within seven days, uh, we will register a payment default against you. This could affect your credit rating um, and we'll also um, start with legal action. And the last two are just how to register a payment default and some default guidelines as well. So we do have a, a, a nice suite of debt collection tools there available for you to use. We are improving on that all the time. We've got a few other things that will be released in the next couple of weeks as well. Um, that goes a little bit deeper to assist with actually creating other templates. Let's jump back to the dashboard. Just on the dashboard as well, you'll also see a few things like statistics. So I can see that I'm using 98% of my watch list. Now the way Creditor Watch works from a cost point of view, a billing point of view, is you pay a monthly subscription uh, or an annual subscription, your choice. And that subscription is dependent on how many customers uh, you have, how many customers you're monitoring. Um, so depending on how many customers you have, that will determine your monthly or annual We'll also provide um, a view of how many customers that, I'm, I'm, that you're dealing with, or in this case that I'm dealing with, that have adverse data against them. So I can see 25%, which is not a good thing. Um, so that is actually all available within my high risk list. Also, if your emails go down for whatever reason, you can actually see all the recent alerts here. So you can see them coming through exactly as if they were coming through via email. So what I'll do is a quick six REs recap. So research the credit history for all new customers and remind them for prompt payment. Review their activity regularly, be that you know, having a look at how they pay you, looking at your receivables, um, or you know, setting up alerts, for instance, to uh, enable you to react to important changes. And obviously, recover bad debt. So when you cannot recover bad debt, you need to start considering registering a default to warn others, but also to put a bit more pressure on your customer that you take your payment term seriously. Um, and you will obviously go that extra step to, to recover that debt and, and registering a payment default or taking them to court is obviously something that, you know, for the big, for, that you should all be uh, considering, particularly going to court, you know, if it is a significant size debt. So I've got a little bit of information here before we wrap up. Um, APA members receive a 15 day free trial and 20% discount across all accounts. So if Credit Watch is something that you're interested in, click on this link 
and it will take you through to a form to fill out and we'll be in contact with you to get a little bit more information about you know, who you are, what you do, and get you set up with a free trial. Um, the best thing about that is you can use it as if you're a paying customer to get a feel for, is this gonna work for my business or not? And obviously at that stage, you know, we'll provide a, um, a quote as to what it's gonna cost on an ongoing basis. We also have an upcoming webinar where I'm looking into more detail at our, uh, our small business risk review for Q2. Um, so if you wanna register for that, you can click on that link. If you've got any questions, obviously not now or down the track, uh, you want to speak to someone, we do have a dedicated APA account manager who looks after all of our APA members that use Creditor Watch. His name's Luke Dimitriou. So I've got his email here and also a contact number. Um, but feel free just to call in. That's actually the head office. You can ask for Luke or you can speak to anyone there that should be able to help you with any questions that you have or any uh, you know, pricing things, et cetera, that you, you might want to query. Um, I'll just jump in and have a look at any questions that may have popped up. So there's none at this stage, which is fine. Um, if you do have any in the coming days, as I said, please don't hesitate to get in contact with us. Uh, but really from me and Credit Watch, thanks for joining today. Appreciate your time. Um, hopefully you've still got time to, to go and grab some lunch. And I haven't taken up too much of it. Um, I will pass back to Kate now. Who will uh, will sign off for us? So thank you, everyone. Awesome, thanks, Patrick. That was great. Um, and yeah, as Patrick mentioned, details are on the screen for Patrick or Luke. So do feel free to contact them if you have any questions. Um, tomorrow, you'll receive a follow up email with a link to the recording of today's webinar and a view to link the slides as well. So on behalf of Patrick and Appa, thank you for joining us today and have a great afternoon.